As early as two centuries before Christ, we see evidence of music in Greek statuary. For centuries, uh, composers have been putting their music down on paper. The squiggly lines you see in this example are called gnomes. The voice went up as the line went up, and the voice went down as the line went down. The singer's voice goes up as the black dots go up, and the singer's voice goes down as the black dots go down. By the end of the 11th century, the four-line staff was in use, uh, fixing the position of the notes more precisely. You'll notice in this sample the four lines going horizontally. In this very early depiction of a musical performance, the lady is holding early manuscript. Uh, the notes are going up and down. The conductor is to her left with the long baton. In front of her is the organ uh, called a portable. Uh, in front of him is a small harp. Behind the harpist is a mandolin. In this next slide, they're beginning to show us how long they would like for us to hold the notes. How, once you play the note, how long would you sustain it? Notice some of the notes are hollow, some are dark, and some have dots next to them. So all of that was the beginning of rhythm, and this is how it appears today. The very top note is called a whole note. That equals four counts. The two notes below that are called half notes. Uh, those combined equal four counts. The notes below those notes are called quarter notes. Four of those equals the very top note, equaling four counts. Um, the eight notes below those notes are called eighth notes, and those all equal the very top note. And the 16 notes below that are called sixteenth notes, and they equal the very top note as well. So if that made you really dizzy, don't feel alone because it's quite common to get confused about rhythm. You usually have to practice it an awful lot before it really sticks. So the church had tremendous influence on how music evolved, especially the notation of music. Uh, as you can see in this example, you see the earliest scales, the church modes, Ionian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, and so forth. So in this next slide, we're going to focus on the C scale. If you'll notice at the very top, it starts with G, A, B. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on C. 
and C, D, E, F, G, it keeps marching upward and then it starts over at A, B, C, D, E, F, G, once again it starts over on A. Well the C scale was only from C to C and you can notice on the uh, keyboard below it starts on C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then it would start over if there were another note there it would start over on C. By the time of the early Renaissance, um, slight dissonance was being introduced into music. Composers such as Dupre, and Palestrina in Italy were introducing semitones. And since semitones were considered slightly dissonant deviations from the traditional scales, um, they weren't widely encouraged during the Renaissance. Um, some even considered them evil. And in this slide you see how those semitones were eventually notated. Uh, the top one is called a sharp, the tic-tac-toe sign, and that would raise the note upward in tone, uh, make it higher, and the next one is a flat, and that would lower it. And the next one is called a natural sign, which would return it back to the original note. And eventually, those sharp signs, those tic-tac-toe signs, were placed at the beginning of music, uh, telling the reader that each time they encountered that particular note, they would need to raise it. This chart demonstrates for you all of the dynamic markings, how loud, how soft you play the piece. Uh, the most intense one is the fortissimo at the top, and at the very bottom you have pianissimo, the softest. Gradually, harmony was introduced into music. Uh, in this painting, we might imagine that these two people are singing different notes at the same time and that can be considered harmony. This is how a um, harmonic chord might look in notation. See the three notes stacked on top of each other? They're played at the exact same time. This is a good chart demonstrating um, so many of the most common music notation symbols. And for the most part, music notation has stayed the same for 400 years.